Esmeralda Richiez Martinez was born on August 23, 2006, in the province of La Autogracia in the Dominican Republic, to parents who owned a restaurant, Alijo Richiez Castillo, and Isabel Martinez Richiez. In 2023, the 16-year-old girl was living with her parents and her older sister Yurimar. Esmeralda grew up as a very charming and artistic young woman, which she enthusiastically showcased on TikTok. She had a fondness for the camera, and it was evident that this affection was mutual, as seen in her short videos where she displayed charisma, a love for dancing, fashion, and makeup. Esmeralda was studying in the senior classes of her school, and her classmates described her as a joyful and kind girl, who prioritized the well-being of others. She had won the affection not only of her classmates but also of her teachers, some of whom didn't hide their special regard for her. One of them was a 35-year-old named John Kelly Martinez, who taught mathematics and physical education. The student and the teacher were often seen together at school, and they would sometimes go out to have fun in the company of other students. One such evening happened on Sunday, February 12, 2023. Around 7.30 p.m., John Kelly arrived at Esmeralda's house in a black Honda, in which three other underage girls were already seated, along with the man's cousin Ruben Marillo Martinez. The teacher asked Esmeralda's mother, Isabella, for permission to take her daughter with them to an amusement park. Isabella agreed because she believed her daughter would be in safe hands. Moreover, the amusement park was a crowded place with many other teenagers. One condition the woman set was to bring the schoolgirl back late. On the same evening, when Esmeralda's father, Alijo, returned from church and didn't find his daughter at home, he called her mobile phone. The girl told her father that the whole group had visited the beach but that she would be home soon because they were on their way back. When she entered the house, her parents couldn't overlook that she appeared unusually pale and asked her what had happened. Esmeralda replied that nothing had happened, although her face was visibly distressed. Then her mother demanded explanations from one of her daughter's friends. The woman suspected that her daughter had been given some prohibited substances. The girl's classmate, of course, denied this. The girl had intended to spend the night at the Richiez family's house, but seeing Esmeralda's state and realizing how concerned and upset her parents were, she decided to go home instead. After her departure, the parents began to scold their daughter for going to the beach, even though the teacher had promised the mother that they would go to the amusement park. They were also displeased with the fact that their daughter had returned so late, knowing very well that she had school the next day. Throughout this time, Esmeralda sat on her bed, and when she got up, there was blood on the bed sheets. The girl assured her mother that she was having her period, and her mother gave her a sedative. After that, the whole family went to sleep. Early in the morning on Monday, Esmeralda sent a voice message to her friend, pleading for help because she was bleeding heavily, but she didn't receive a response. A little later, at 6.30 am, Isabella knocked on her daughter's room door several times. She tried to wake her up because it was time for Esmeralda to get ready for school, but there was no response to her mother's knocks. At that point, Isabella called her husband, and together they opened the door. The first thing that caught their eyes when they entered was Esmeralda's bed, which was covered in blood. And on the bathroom floor, they found the lifeless body of Esmeralda. On the same morning, at 8.15 am, they informed the police about the incident. The coroner took the body away to conduct an autopsy and determine the cause of death of the teenage girl. The detectives began their investigation. First and foremost, they examined Esmeralda's phone. Several voice messages, sent to her friend, who had escorted her home that night, were still saved on the device. The parents of the three girls who were with Esmeralda that evening also handed over their daughter's phones to the police allowing them to gather all the necessary information for the investigation. While going through the girls' phones, investigators came across a particularly intriguing voice message. The victim's classmate and friend mentioned that the teacher had added something to Esmeralda's drink without her knowledge. The detectives also discovered that John Kelly had been in constant communication with the schoolgirl's friends, 
inquiring about Esmeralda's well-being. John Kelly surrendered to the police at noon on Tuesday, February 14. After questioning, he was immediately placed under arrest. The chief prosecutor in the case confirmed his arrest. The following day, a search was conducted at his home, during which items such as trousers, a black half-shirt, and black and white sports shoes were seized. These were the clothes he wore on the day of the trip to the beach. The man's cousin, Reuben, was also detained, not because he had been with the group that evening, but because he attempted to hide material evidence by trying to burn his cousin's belongings. The death of the 16-year-old girl caused significant concern in society. Various rumors and hypotheses circulated, with one prevailing theory suggesting that Esmeralda was expecting a child from her mathematics teacher, with whom she had been involved for several months. It was speculated that on the day of her death, the man had given her abortion pills. These speculations gained more traction when the girl's aunt claimed to have found a pregnancy test at her home. Against this backdrop, on Wednesday February 15, a farewell ceremony was held for Esmeralda. Amidst tears, calls for justice for the girl resounded. Her parents expressed regret that their daughter hadn't confided in them, and disclosed what had transpired between her and the teacher. According to her family, the man had been displaying a special interest in her for some time. For instance, her sister mentioned that she had seen Esmeralda with the teacher several times and had asked about their relationship, but the girl consistently denied any connection beyond his role as her teacher. Esmeralda's father noted that he had never seen the teacher before and only met him when he brought her home. He regretted not being at home when John Kelly and the others came to pick up Esmeralda, as he would have never allowed her to leave at that time, especially since the teacher had deceived Esmeralda's mother, as he clearly had no intention of taking her to the amusement park, as he had promised. Instead, they went to the beach. Meanwhile, the investigation continued, and the investigators interviewed the girls who had spent the evening with Esmeralda. One of the schoolgirls told the investigators that originally the entire group had planned to go to a different location, an amusement park. However, on the way they changed their plans and altered their destination. Two men and four underage girls eventually headed to the beach quite late in the evening. Before reaching the beach, John Kelly stopped the car at a store, where he bought beer and presumably tablets. Upon returning to the car, he asked his cousin to sit in the back seat, and Esmeralda sat in the front. The man had a thermos with him, into which he poured the beer and added five tablets. He offered the drink to Esmeralda without telling her about the added substances. However, one of the girls present noticed this and later informed the police about it. When they arrived at Macau Beach, which is approximately 28 kilometers from Esmeralda's home, the girls exited the car along with Reuben, leaving the teacher alone with Esmeralda. They spent around 30 minutes together in the car. Naturally, their prolonged absence caught the attention of Esmeralda's friends, who asked Reuben, the teacher's cousin, about their whereabouts. What he replied is not reported. Nevertheless, after half an hour, John Kelly reappeared and instructed them to get back into the car because they were leaving. Esmeralda's classmate recounted that she had asked, to stop at a gas station because she needed to use the restroom. When she went into the restroom with her friends, they noticed that her clothes were soaked with blood. There was so much blood that the girls had to clean the floor in the restroom. Her friends tried to help Esmeralda, and were greatly alarmed. They asked a woman working at the gas station if this was normal. The woman responded negatively, and advised them to seek immediate medical attention. The girls informed John Kelly about this situation, but despite appearing distressed, he claimed he would get into trouble. Nevertheless, according to witnesses, he went to a clinic in Bavaro, but Esmeralda refused to go to the emergency department, even though she had lost consciousness multiple times in the teacher's car. Throughout the return journey, Esmeralda continued to bleed incessantly, soaking her clothes so much that they had to buy her new ones. Around a kilometer from her home, they made another stop at the house of one of Esmeralda's friends, where she changed her clothes. She finally arrived home around 11 p.m. Thanks to these testimonies, 
The police obtained surveillance camera footage from the locations Esmeralda had visited that night. One of the stops made by the group was captured on the gas station's security camera. The video showed Esmeralda entering the restroom. The manager recalled that two men in the group purchased alcoholic drinks. Forensic experts also found traces of blood in the gas station's parking lot, corroborating this account. Later, at 22.21, the group stopped at a pharmacy. Against the backdrop of the information obtained by the police, John Kelly was suspended from work for 90 days without the right to receive payment. If the teachers are found not involved in the case, he will be reinstated in his position, and he will receive his full salary. Although it doesn't seem likely that this will happen in the near future. Interestingly, the man is married to another teacher, they have two children in the family, who are studying at the same school as Meralda attended. John Kelly's lawyer stated that the investigation is ongoing, and his client cannot be accused of anything. He emphasized that only with the results of the criminalists will it be possible to say for certain what caused the death. The initial conclusions of the police also sparked numerous discussions in the Dominican Republic, where abortion is prohibited, and everyone hoped that the autopsy would put an end to rumors and assumptions once and for all. However, things don't always unfold as expected. On February 16, an official report, was released stating that the girl had suffered very severe and brutal violence, which led to significant blood loss and hypovolemic shock. This prevented her heart from pumping enough blood to vital organs and resulted in her death. It's worth noting that a patient with hypovolemic shock, no matter how dear it sounds, can be relatively easily stabilized, and medical professionals know how to effectively help the person. Unfortunately, on that night, Esmeralda did not make it into the hands of the doctors. The forensic expert recommended conducting additional toxicological tests to ensure that no new data would emerge that could influence the conclusions about the cause of Esmeralda's death. Interestingly, upon learning the results of the examination, which ruled out the possibility of Esmeralda being pregnant and experiencing a miscarriage, her relatives were clearly puzzled and quite skeptical. The girl's uncle directly stated that the family is unhappy with the report excluding Esmeralda's pregnancy because this theory aligned better with what the investigators had already uncovered. Based on the analysis and conclusions of the forensic expert, as well as the evidence collected during the investigation, the conclusion was drawn that John Kelly drugged the girl without her consent and brutally assaulted her on the beach, leading to blood loss and, a few hours later, to Esmeralda's death. Reuben, the man's cousin, became an accomplice to the crime because he knew that the victim suffered due to his brother's actions and attempted to help conceal his bloodied clothes. On Monday February 20, the first hearing in the case took place. The judge ruled that John Kelly, as the main suspect in the assault and murder of the girl, would remain in custody until the trial, which is set to take place within a year. Reuben was released from custody but required to periodically report to the court. Investigators will also closely examine the behavior of Esmeralda's friends to determine if they are connected to the crime, as their behavior raises many questions. Even Esmeralda's parents suspect them of conspiring with the teacher. On his part, John Kelly's lawyer adopted a rather peculiar strategy, attempting to divert attention from his client and shift it onto other individuals. He accused the girl's parents of having a poor relationship with her and, as evidence of his theory, presented a video of Esmeralda recorded a year ago, where she said, to receive flowers on February 14th, you must die on the 13th. It's more likely that this was a joke, but the lawyer tries to see a much darker subtext behind it. Despite the fact that Esmeralda's family emphasized their satisfaction with the measures taken by the court, they insist on further investigation and analysis, since they are not entirely satisfied with the initial conclusions of the investigation. As their lawyer explained, they want to be fully confident in the reasons that led to Esmeralda's death. The girl's father emphasized that much is still unknown about the case. He stated that John Kelly's behavior is unimaginable because a teacher should be a father figure and protector to students, not a criminal. He hopes that the man will pay for what he did to his daughter in accordance with the full extent of the law. There are still many doubts regarding the case, 
so investigators continue their work as the alleged perpetrator remains in custody.